All right. Should we get started? <laughs> uh, it's good to see all of you guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 20. Uh, that's where we're going to be today. And uh, before we get started, actually, let's pray one more time. Let's pray. Lord, thank you once again uh, for your goodness, Lord, in our lives and how faithful you are. Uh, that you would rise again, Lord. Uh, you even said it. Your word said it, Lord, and you proved it. And just thank you so much, Lord, that you're, you're able to do wonders uh, amongst us, Lord. I pray you would continue to reveal your heart to us. Uh, show us that love, Lord. Reveal to us your, your, what your word says and uh, continue to train us up and equip us. And I also pray, Lord, uh, for those that may be here that uh, may be on the sideline and, and uh, in doubting, uh, that, Lord, you would reveal yourself to even them, that salvation would be found uh, today, that there would be a moment of belief, Lord, of, of letting go and uh, turning their lives to you in surrender. So thank you uh, that only you can do that work, and uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, if you guys are at John chapter 20, um, I think it's such a beautiful day today. What a great reminder uh, today actually is special because it, we know what happened, what Jesus did on the cross for us. In fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, in this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. In fact, in John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And this is what Jesus has done for us. It's a demonstration of love uh, that he's given us, right? He, he did it all because of sin. And the truth is, we're all guilty of that, right? We're all sinners. We've all fallen short. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, uh, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In fact, uh, Romans 3.10 says there is none who understands. There's none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside, and they have all together become unprofitable. And there's none who does good. No, not one, right? I could picture somebody saying, what about me? And so he added, no, not one. <laughs> so the point is there, there's nothing that we can do to satisfy uh, the wrath of God upon sinful mankind. And But Jesus Christ, he paid the price for you and I at Calvary with his own blood 2,000 years ago. And, and uh, in fact, in Matthew 16, verse 25, uh, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So Jesus wants us to follow him. And, and he, just like he called the disciples, you guys remember when he walked up to them and said, Hey, John, come and follow me. Hey, Peter, come follow me, right? Andrew, Come follow. And for three years, they were following him. They were hearing him. They were, uh, you know, seeing the teachings and seeing his lifestyle, his example. And the same way he called the disciples is the same way he's calling you and I today. He's saying, come and follow me, right? And, and God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. He has also called you by name, by the way, to come and follow him, just like he knows the, the name of every single star. Have you guys ever seen a picture of the stars? And then you, you zoom in, and then there's even more stars, and you're like, where'd those come from? And then you zoom in even more, and it's like, wow, I can't even count those, right? He knows every name of every star, and he knows every one of you. He knows your name. He even knows the number of hairs that we have. That's how crazy and love he is with us, right? It's just amazing. Uh, but uh, he, he, he still... He loves us, and he wants to do a work in and through our lives, and he can use you no matter where you're at in life right now, uh, which I thank the Lord for, because it doesn't matter what we've done in the past, it doesn't matter, you know, how much shame is there, 
How much guilt is there? Uh, you can think of the most horrific things that any mankind has done, and yet Jesus is even able to save them. His blood is able to, to bring that forgiveness for even those people, which might even be you. <laughs> the things that we can do, right? It's just sad. But in fact, uh, as we go through our study, that's what we're going to look at today, is looking at some people who are very unlikely, right? The, the, the unlikely type of people uh, and yet Jesus would even choose them of all people. And, and when Jesus came to Galilee, you guys remember he uh, went into Jerusalem. Uh, he, he didn't go to those who we would expect him to go to. Uh, he didn't go to the dignitaries, right, until after, uh, you know, his crucifixion. Uh, he didn't go to the religious leaders, right, which you would think that, you know, if he's going to go and pick anybody, he's going to pick the ones who know the Bible inside out. In fact, he was mad at them, if anything, uh, because they were so full of themselves. They were all about themselves and what they wanted to do. They were taking advantage of the people. In fact, during those three years, Jesus was rebuking the religious leaders most of the time. So um, of, of all people, though, God came and he chose Peter. Uh, Peter would be kind of the guy who would take the lead out of all the rest of the disciples. Uh, and God would even choose him. He kind of Peter's the guy who kind of smelled like fish all the time. It's like, ooh. Oh, oh, hey, Peter, how's it going, right? Uh, but, but God called him, and God even called John. Uh, John, uh, who wrote this gospel of John that we're about to get into, uh, and the three epistles, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, uh, the book of Revelation. It, did you guys know John? Uh, historians say that he was one of the, he was the youngest of all the disciples. He was probably 18 to 19 years old when Jesus said, hey, John, come and follow me. And, and he did. And here at the resurrection, he would probably be about 21, 22 years old-ish, somewhere around there. Um, and so God can use you at any age. In fact, God even used Abraham at 75 years old. Isn't that incredible? In fact, God even gave him a child at 100 years old. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm 100, I don't think I want a child. <laughs> Been there, done that. That's good, right? Uh, great, great, great grandchildren. That's wonderful. But, um, but the Bible tells us about a, a woman named Mary Magdalene. And, and that she is, uh, by the way, Magdalene, it's not her last name. That's Magdal is the city, the place that she came from. Just like we say Jesus of Nazareth, uh, Jesus, Christ is a title. It's not his last name. Uh, so Mary uh, Magdalene is not her last name. We're so used to hearing last names, right? Um, but it's, it's just uh, identifying the person with the place and, you know, kind of like we'll be like, oh, that's John from Oshkosh. And you're like, oh, that John. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Um, that's, so that's what Mary Magdalene, uh, her name is. But the Bible tells us that she was deeply troubled. In fact, she had, uh, she was possessed by seven demons. And people would perceive her as just some crazy woman. In fact, people neglected her. People uh, stayed away from her. Um, and, and who would have thought that Jesus, of all people, would approach this crazy woman, right? Who seems to be, maybe her hair was crazy. Maybe her clothing was ripped up, right? And, and it's like, whoa, don't talk to her, right? But Jesus went to even people like that. And, and today, a lot of people think that... Um, when uh, I remember asking people about Mary Magdalene, and they're like, oh, yeah, she was a prostitute. And it's like, what? Why would you say that? Uh, you know, people confuse her with another Mary in the Bible. But I think, uh, man, it, it's probably not a good idea to confuse a woman of being a prostitute. <laughs> you could confuse her for being a doctor and a lawyer, right? But a prostitute? Ooh, right? And it's so true. If you actually look in Scripture, she wasn't. It doesn't say that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. So uh, whoever's saying that, tell them, hey, uh, where does it say that? And then, it probably shouldn't say that. Uh, but nevertheless, this woman, she had a great need. And being in her condition, she was most, uh, I would say, one of the most unlikely uh, to be called by Jesus, and yet she was. And did you guys know, by the way, that Mary Magdalene, um, she's even mentioned more than the disciples in the, in the Gospels, right? In, in, in 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In fact, she's mentioned more than any other woman in the Gospels. So quick little fun facts for you. Um, but Mary Magdalene, she had a, the privilege of being one of the first people uh, to be there at the resurrection of Jesus and, and when he appeared. So others think, you know, wh- wh- why a woman, right? And why Mary Magdalene, of all people? I mean, if it was a woman, shouldn't it have been a prominent woman, a, a woman of royalty, a, a woman that had a title, right? But why her? Why would Jesus choose her? And as I was going through the, the Gospels here and I was looking at the resurrection, um, she really stood out to me where I was like, wow, that's what, what is happening here? Uh, and so I think it's interesting because if you really think about her life, her life was shattered. Her life was, uh, you know, bruised and, and beaten, if you will, neglected and, and uh, by man. And yet Jesus chose, of all people, to reveal himself to her, you know? And, and, and that's how I feel, by the way. It's like, Lord, why would you choose me, right? Like, I mean, I look at all these other people, and it's like, why? I get it, why you chose them, but why would you choose me, of all people, uh, I don't know if you guys feel that way, but I do, and, and I'm pretty sure that's how she felt. She realized, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I have messed up so much in my life, and yet he came to her to reveal himself first. I mean, what a privilege that is. It's amazing. Let, let, let's get started here. <clears throat> in John chapter 20, look at verse 1. Uh, it says, now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Uh, So we know that she went with several other women. Uh, There was Mary, the mother of Jesus. There was Mary um, Salome. Uh, And and, uh, so when they got to the tomb, the, the stone had already been rolled away. And I love that. Sometimes we have uh, stones in our lives, and only Jesus can roll that away, right? Only the Lord can remove uh, what seemed to be just, you know, impossible to be removed in our lives, and only he can do that. But Mary, at this point, uh, she, it's like she almost abandoned the women, and she saw it was, you know, he's not there, so the, the stones rolled away, and she just ran. She just got out of there, and she had not seen the angels. You guys remember the angel uh, said, you know, why are you looking at the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Uh, that's what the other women heard. Uh, she, Mary took out Mary Magdalene, but God didn't I love this because God didn't leave Jesus in the grave. Did you guys know there's an Old Testament prophecy about that? Jesus, um, when he died, it says in Psalm uh, 16, verse 10, it says, For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, and this is David here, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. In other words, God wasn't going to allow his body to decay and just sit there right and and fall apart uh he was going to take him up he was going to he was going to come alive uh let's keep going here look at verse two it says then she ran and came to simon peter and to the other disciple whom jesus loved by the way this other disciple whom jesus loved is john here the writer of the gospel of john here um he didn't like to you know say his name so he kind of gave himself another name and of all the names he would choose right he's like i'm the one that jesus loves right i could see him looking at the disciples while he's saying that i'm the one right but but john didn't like to to write you know his own name and and i i get it right um so that's who he's referring to so mary she's running to simon right she came to simon and and the history tells us by the way that simon peter uh was a big man i i picture him as one of these wisconsin hunter men right they're like, oh, yeah. they, they got that nasty smell on them they're like oh so the deer doesn't smell me oh yeah. how's it going right uh but peter's one of those i, I would say unlikely candidates um, anyone would choose, and yet Jesus chose him, right? But let, let's read verse 2 again, sorry. It says, then she ran, and she came to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples, so maybe she's knocking on his door, and they're, they're kind of nearby, and, and, uh, and, and it said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. She didn't come to the tomb, by the way, 
believing in the resurrection. Uh, immediately, she ran to Peter and John. Hey, something happened, guys. Come, come. Let's figure out what just happened here, right? And, and let me tell you guys, by the way, believing that somebody died for three days, that they rose from the grave, that's a hard thing to chew on. If you really think about it, um, if you told me somebody that just passed away three days ago, oh, guess what, they're alive. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> what are you talking about? So I get it, right? Um, and, and some of you guys might be here and you might be thinking the same thing. Um, you know, did Jesus really rise again the third day, right? And that was kind of her heart. She didn't really, wasn't expecting him to rise. Um, she, she ran to them saying, hey, something happened. I mean, what, what could it have been, right? Uh, and, and Jesus even told the disciples, by the way, over and over, in fact, in the, in the Gospels alone, over 10 times, he told them uh, that, that he would be going to Jerusalem, he's going to be handed over to the Romans, he's going to be killed, right? Uh, and three days, he's going to rise again. He told them in different ways, and they still were like, oh, what are you talking about, right? They didn't get it. Um, and, and it didn't click into their hearts, it actually, until after the resurrection, and we're going to see that right now, that it finally just like, like, oh, I get what's going on. Uh, it, it just finally they believe. So even Thomas, by the way, Jesus, he would appear. We're going to see that right now. He's going to appear to the disciples one by one. Uh, Thomas missed out. I mean, they're all excited. They're all talking. Oh, he's here. He's appeared. He's like, yeah, right, right. <laughs> and he's one of those guys. You guys know people like that where they're just always, you're like, hey, dude, guess what? And you're like, I doubt it, right? That's, that's, the, that's the Thomas guy. He's always doubting. And so he's like, I doubt it, right? I'm, I'm not going to believe unless I I, uh, you know, I see his scarred hands and I feel his, you know, his side. That's where the, the soldiers, you know, pierced him to make sure he was dead. And, and so the next Sunday they're gathered together, you know, and they're actually afraid because the doors are shut. The windows are closed. They're like, shh, let's whisper. They don't let anybody know we're out there. Um, anyways, I'm sorry. I used to do that growing up too, by the way, when people will call. And we'd be like, don't tell them we're here. And we already, you know, picked it up. Sorry, they already heard you. <laughs> they're, they're here, you know, or, or uh, you know, someone would come to your, have you guys ever done that? You act like you're not home and you're trying to tell everybody, shh, someone's at the front door. <laughs> I could hear you in there. Uh, that's kind of, you know, what's going on here anyways. They're, they're kind of afraid. Uh, but anyways, Jesus comes and, and he appears in, in their home there. And he tells them, don't be afraid, right? And, and then he looks at Thomas, and he's like, Thomas, you know, fill my side. Look, look at my hands, right? Look, look at the piercing here. It's me, right? And Thomas, it, which is interesting, he said something very incredible at that point. He said, my Lord and my God. It's for a Jew to tell a man that he is God himself would be considered blasphemy, unless you were really determined that that man was the Messiah, that he was God Almighty. And that at that moment, that was the moment that Thomas believed, right? It was the spark, if you will. And in John chapter 20, verse 29, Jesus says to Thomas, he says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And, and by the way, this is you and I. Um, God can reveal himself to you and I, and if we choose to believe in him, he can do incredible things in our lives. He can transform our lives in revealing so much that I, I felt like in my entire life I had a blindfold on. I felt like I was blind to the simplest things until I came to Christ. It was almost like those blinders were removed, and I was like, whoa! I, I've never read the Bible before with understanding, and now every word is just like, action pack it's coming alive and and it's just something that happens at that moment of belief uh, that things come alive and now everyone is skeptical by the way at this point Mary Magdalene even she's skeptical um, and and she doesn't know where the body of Jesus is um, Peter and uh, John they begin to run to the grave uh, site here the tomb and 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 they hear 
this theme music from Chariots of Fire. Dun, 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 dun. Right? Dun, 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 dun. At least that's what I hear when I'm reading. Anyways, I told you it comes alive, right? Um, anyways, good movie, by the way. If you guys haven't seen it, it's an old movie called Chariots of Fire. Have you guys seen that one? Okay, cool. I was going to say, we need to play that. We'll play it afterward. Um, but look, look at verse 3. It says, Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. And so they both ran together. Should have just ended it there, John. But no, he keeps going here. He wants to add something further for us. And it says, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. So John wants you to know that he beat Peter uh, to the tomb, just so you know. Okay, all right. And I get it. Us men, we're, we're competitive, right? If there's a race, it's like, hey, bring it on. Let's go, all right? And he's like, Trang! But uh, we want to win, right? So remember, Peter, uh, I get it. He's the bigger guy. He's, he's probably huffing and puffing at this point. Uh, but look at verse 5. It says, and he's stooping down and looking in. So John got there first. He's stooping in, looking in. He saw the linen cloth lying there, and he, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. Um, Oh, sorry, guys, I haven't been doing that. i got to remember that. But So John's looking in at the same uh, linen cloth that he had just seen three days ago uh, when they wrapped the body of Jesus. And, but John didn't go in. He, was just, he, he stood there, he's looking in, and he's just taking it all in. And all of a sudden you hear, oh, 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 zoom, right past him, right? And, and Peter has that personality, or he's like, I'm, I just, I got to see it for myself, right? He's, he's in there in the tomb. And, and look at what Peter saw. In verse 6 it says, And he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Now, uh, maybe Jesus sat up, maybe he folded it, maybe, um, I just heard, I just saw a little um, meme thing on social media of uh, that, and I don't know if it's true, I didn't look it up, so don't, don't beat me up, but uh, I heard back in the day that uh, the Jews, when they're eating, uh, and let's say they're wealthy and they got servants, uh, that if they're eating and they're finished with their food, they just throw their napkin right there on the, you know, the plate, and that means the servant can go and pick it up. But if they fold the napkin nicely and put it down, it means, hey, I'm coming back, right? Maybe they just walked out shortly, but they're coming back. And, and so I like that. That's pretty cool. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's the case or not. But look at verse 8. It says, then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, so this is John, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside of the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Um, Verse 12, it says, And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now notice, she didn't come to the tomb looking for Jesus. Uh, other than, well, I, I should say, let's rewind that. Other than finding Jesus, right? She was looking more so for the body, but not. She wasn't, you know, thinking of the resurrected body. And and Mary followed Jesus. If you think about it, all the way to the cross, she saw his body be broken and and beaten, and and seeing his endurance. You guys remember, even at the cross. He could even, his body was just in so much anguish and so much, uh, it was so weak because of all the blood that had been taken, the, the whip alone. By the way, most people died at the whip. Uh, he was still alive, and, and he, but he could even carry the cross, right? And yet he kept trying, uh, and it was his willingness to endure the cross. He literally, the Bible says he laid down his life for us, and I get that imagery of Maybe the Roman soldiers are there, and they're, they, normally they're like, you know, holding them down and like, get them, right? And, may, and then they see Jesus, and they're like, whoa, what love is this, right? It's a, it's a foreign love. It's a, 
you know, what planet is this guy from? I mean, what is he doing? Why is he willingly laying down his life? And yet he did. But um, so Mary followed Jesus even all the way to the tomb. And also notice, by the way, did you guys catch this? The way the, what it looks like here? There's an angel at the head and there's an angel sitting at the feet as well. This is a perfect picture of the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. You guys remember back in the Old Testament where the high priest would come in once a year uh, to the Holy of Holies, that back room, and he, they, he would sprinkle the blood of a pure spotless lamb, and it would be for the atonement of the sins of the nation of Israel. And, and here you got Jesus' clothing here, that he was uh, full of blood, and so these, these linen cloths are full of blood, and then you got the two angels, and that's what the mercy seat looked at like, right? The, the angels are looking down at, in wonder and awe at the mercy that God would have on mankind, that God would become like us, uh, live among us, but he would take our place of judgment. We deserved to die, because of our sins. That was our consequence. That's where sin leads. It leads to death. And yet Jesus said, I'll take your place. And he took our place for us. And, and, and there's so much more there. Um, let, let's go on here. Look at verse 14. It says, now when she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And woman, or woman, sorry, whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Now, what is Mary thinking here? What is she talking about? Tell me where he is, and I'll carry him away. Uh, think about this, by the way. In, in the Jewish burials, uh, the body would be wrapped in linen cloths. Uh, they would tuck spices, frankincense, myrrh. Uh, remember when Jesus, was at his birth, you know, they brought the, the frankincense and myrrh. But in, in John 19, 39, it says it's about 100 pounds of all of this fragrance, right, that, that they're embalming it, almost like a mummified type thing, right? And so this is a lot of pounds on top of the body. Now, an average man is about, what, 170, 180, right, men? Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. But, but if you get, you know, put that equation with the other, uh, it's almost like 300 pounds. What is Mary going to do? Tell me where his body is, and I'll carry him away. Is, is she really, like, going to pick up his body? And, and you know, uh, I watch the movies, and it's always a thin little girl, you know, but in reality, what if it's not? I mean, what, what if she is, like, you know, she talks like the Terminator, right? Give me the body and I'll put him where, you know? And I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know how to talk like that. But um, I don't know. I was looking at that. I was like, yikes. What, what, what if she's even bigger than Peter? I don't know. Uh, but Mary, she's able to say that. And I think here that I think she was able to say that because of our love for Jesus. Again, you guys remember, she was there for Jesus, right, from the very beginning. And the Bible even tells us, by the way, that Jesus' body was so beaten and bruised, uh, it was beyond recognition. He didn't even look like a man anymore. People didn't even know who, I mean, this is Jesus who walked with them, and they're like, he doesn't look like him. Uh, and so Mary was with him from the very beginning, and it's interesting that the man speaking to her is actually Jesus himself. But, but with her tears, she doesn't even realize it, right? She's looking down. But look at verse 16. Uh, Jesus says to her, Mary. And she turned around and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. She didn't recognize him until he called her by name, Mary. Isn't that amazing? And, and, and the Bible says that God has called, he's calling you by name as well. He knows every single one of you here. He knows you all by name, and, and he's calling us. Jesus, is, he called Mary, and he's calling us as well. Look at verse 17. It says, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me. So what happened? She, she turned around immediately because she was in tears, right? And she immediately embraced him. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I you know, I'll, I'll get on YouTube once in a while, and I'll see those clips of people coming back from the military. Have you guys seen those? And they su surprise their family or even their kids. Their kids are at school, and they turn around. They're like, ah, daddy! 
and they're all in tears, and they're just, but what do they do? And I love how they do. They just break, you know, they just cling to them, right? And, and, and they just, they won't let go, right? Even though all the class is there and they're, the peer pressure, they could care less. It's their daddy, right? And I think that's what she's doing here. She's clinging to him. That's the imagery at least I get. And, and she's like, I ain't letting go. But notice it says, Jesus says, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. So she's going to go to them, and what I find interesting is that they're not going to believe her. They don't believe her. In fact, it reminds me of the, uh, uh, the two men on the road to Emmaus. You guys remember the men are there? Jesus walks up to them, and he's like, why are you guys so sad? And they're like, ugh. Who are you? Are you like you didn't? I mean, you haven't heard that what happened to Jesus? I mean, we thought that he was the Messiah, uh, and they crucified and killed him. Uh, but they also added one little thing there in the end, which I thought was interesting. They said, you know, there's there's some woman that said that she saw him rise again, you know, but that was a woman, right? I think that was their mindset back in the day because because it was a woman they weren't going to believe. Isn't that sad? And yet God chose to come to Mary, to to reveal himself to her, and to send her out as an ambassador, if you will. Go and tell the other disciples, right? And yet they still chose not to believe. And and they heard that Jesus had risen from the dead, and they reject it, right? And um, after Mary, you know, uh, came to the disciples, Jesus revealed himself to her. He revealed himself to the other disciples one by one. Uh, He even revealed himself to... um, a crowd of people, uh, and to James himself. Actually, and later on, as as one born out of a a time, the Bible says, he appeared to even the apostle Paul. And in fact, Peter even says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty, of his resurrection, when he came among us. This was not a fable. Men don't die for fables. Uh, If these 12 men and and, and this woman, Mary, and the other women, if they made up uh, the resurrection, uh, then this is something very unique. Uh, It's unheard of to see a group of people that would literally be willing to lay down their lives at torture, being persecuted. Each one of them would be martyred, uh, except John. Well, he was still thrown. They tried killing him, right? Throw him in a hot boiling thing of oil. Uh, and then they, they banished him off to the island of Patmos to go, you know, just, just die. And he died at an old age uh, before, you know, later on after all the other disciples. But, um, since Jesus rose again, though, they were so determined. In fact, they were so bold because Jesus rose from the grave uh, that death couldn't even silence them. I mean, they were not going to stop. They were so excited about Jesus. Ain't that amazing? That's the kind of faith that, that God is calling us to. That's the kind of belief that he wants to do in us. Uh, and only he can do that work in us. In fact, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, it says, to whom he also presented himself, this is Jesus, alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. In fact, turn with me to Matthew uh, chapter 27, please. Matthew chapter 27. Uh, this word infallible, um, what does that even mean? Infallible. Uh, proof. It's a proof that is not fallible, right? It's proof that cannot be overcome. It's undeniably true uh, or truth that it happened. And, you know, think about this. Post-resurrection, Jesus revealed himself to even the, you know, the disciples. He ate with them. He drank with them. Uh, he was talking with them. They heard him, right? They seen him. They were, you know, embracing him as well. Like, oh, I can't believe this. It's amazing, right? They were there. They heard the felt, touch, seen. Um, and in fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, 
verse 5, as you're turning there to Matthew um, 27, it says uh, in verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 15, uh, and that he, Jesus, had, w- was seen by Cephas, this is Peter, then by the twelve, after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. You know, I find it interesting that when atheists set out to disprove the resurrection, and when they see the facts before them, it's undeniable proof. It's truth. It's, it's, uh, it's right there. They can't deny it. Um, and they become believers because of the facts. Now, the truth is, Jesus did die by crucifixion. It's undeniable. You can look up history on your own. You can look up, uh, you know, the disciples. They were so uh, emboldened in their belief about the resurrection uh, that, that, you know, they saw the resurrected Jesus uh, and they proclaimed him. You look at the, the, uh, the conversion of Paul. You look at the conversion of James. You look at the empty tomb. These are all undeniable facts that you would you would, you can't deny. Uh, and people have tried to, but pe- people can, I found, can see the truth revealed right before them over and over and over and over and over again, and they still reject it. Why? Well, because <clears throat> if Jesus rose from the dead, and he did, uh, then really, who is he? Well, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. Jesus is God Almighty come in the flesh. And, and he, because he is God Almighty, he wants to be God to you, which means you're in a position of, uh, ought to be in a position of surrender in, in, as a servant. He demands obedience from us. And others that they know that, right? And so they choose, no, I want to be my own God. It's the same sinful nature from Adam and Eve, right? Uh, I, I could be just like God. Oh, I'll take that, right? No, we, we have it all in us, guys. I get it. It's our flesh. Uh, but, but that's the reason why I found most people choose not to believe. They can have all the facts. You, Jesus, within those, just those three years alone, fulfilled over 300 prophecies. I mean, how, how is that even possible, right? And yet he did, and it's undeniable proof. Uh, now, people say, by the way, Jesus stole the body of Jesus, right? Uh, and, and so, or the disciples, they stole the body of Jesus. In fact, if you're there, Matthew 27, look at verse 62. Verse 62, it says, On the next day, uh, which followed the day of preparation, now we're going to backtrack a little bit here. This is after the crucifixion, uh, on, the, on the day of preparation. It says, The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise. Now, isn't that funny? Even the chief priests and the Pharisees believed that Jesus would rise again. They knew what he said, and the disciples, before the resurrection, were still scratching their head. Oh, what's going on, right? And yet the chief priests and the Pharisees, they took it in. Amazing. Anyways, look at verse 64. It says, therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he has risen from the dead. And so the last deception will be worse than the first. Oh, I love that. Look at verse 65. Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. And so they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Now, interesting, they sealed the stone. This word guard, by the way, could be referring to the, the, uh, the temple guard, which would be about four to 16 men, or the Roman soldiers, uh, most likely, you know, about 16. I was looking it up, about a unit would be about 16 men. Um, but interesting, um, in Matthew chapter 28, look at verse 11 of ch- chapter 28. Uh, and this is, by the way, after the resurrection. They say something interesting. It says, Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them 
his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. Look at verse 14 of chapter 28. It says, And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. And so they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Now, Roman soldiers, by the way, just a little footnote, they, if they fell asleep on a watch, they would be put to death. In fact, not only them, but because all their, the, the other soldiers allowed that person to sleep, their whole unit would be put to death uh, in, in, uh, in Rome, actually. Uh, and so, but here's the problem. If they are saying that the disciples, you know, stole the body away while they slept, think about that. How can sleeping soldiers know that the disciples were the ones who stole the body? <laughs> Am I the only one, right? Like, really? Uh, or they could be like, you know, these, you know, are you guys really saying that the fishermen, uh, a, a lawyer, a doctor, a, you know, a tax collector, really came and defeated Roman soldiers? You know, it's just nothing adds up, right? When you think about it, it's like, seriously. But every single, again, every single disciple uh, would later on be martyred. Uh, you know, even John would die at a, an old death. But they, they were killed by their faith in Jesus. And still 2,000 years later, um, we're carrying on that work. And lots of churches today, by the way, are still, they're meeting, and the main theme is what? He is risen. Isn't that amazing? We, we serve the living God. He's the risen King of kings, the Lord of lords. And, and God desires, by the way, to send us out uh, into this world. Into, there's a lot of hurting people out there, um, and, and uh, they're desperately wanting a Savior, and we have the answer. We know him. And we're able to go out there and share the bad news, right? No, wait. It's called good news, right? Why wouldn't we? It's good news. So uh, he, he came to set, you know, sinners free. He even came to the weird, crazy, you know, people that were even demon-possessed. He even approached them and set them free. And Jesus wants to set you and I free as well. By the way, Jesus has set me free. I'm a living testimony of what Jesus has done. Uh, I live my life in the, the, the ways I wanted to live, right? Like the enemy wants us, do what thou will, right? Whatever you want, that's demonic. And I realize I need Jesus. And in the moment that I believe, not just in his existence, uh, but that he is God, and, and he wants me to surrender my life to him, it was a change. It was a transformation. It was something that only God could do. No man could have done that. And only God could have done that. In fact, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, if you remember Paul, uh, when he was in Athens, uh, he, he ended his message there. He says in Acts 17, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now God, it says, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. You see, Jesus' resurrection guarantees our resurrection as well. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's it. It never said you got to do all these works and run around the church and do all this and that, wear special underwear. It never said any of that, right? It's it simply you confess, you believe, you understand who he is and what he has done for you. And in John chapter 20, verse uh, 30, oh, where am I going here? Um, it says, oh, I don't have it. Uh, it says, I'll just read it to you. John chapter 20, verse 30 and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You know, Jesus told uh, Lazarus' sister, uh, he said in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, 
he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And that's the question I'm going to leave you guys with today. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? If you place your faith in the risen Christ, in Jesus, you can have 100% assurance, confidence that you are born again. And you can, you can just watch and see the Lord reveal himself to you. He says he'll send the, the Holy Spirit, the helper, and he will speak to you. He'll guide you. He'll teach you all things, right? Everything that we need to know about life and godliness is right here in the word of God. And God is able to reveal those things to you. Those blinders will be taken off. But all it takes is that moment, right? That moment of belief. Uh, I'm not going to ask you guys to come down, you know, and, and embarrass you in that sense. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to, to believe on the Lord Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with him, uh, make him your Lord and Savior today, right? Make that decision in your heart to follow Jesus. And he'll give you everything that you need to do that, right? You can be like doubting Thomas, and, and, but it takes him to reveal himself. And he will do that. If you just ask him, he'll reveal himself to you. And so I challenge you, do just that, right? Um, pray with me. In fact, uh, if you don't know the Lord, pray with me. Pray, pray even this with me. Lord, uh, I do believe. I, I believe, Lord, that you died upon the cross for my sins, that you rose again the third day, uh, that I can have life in you, that I can have a relationship with you. I confess my sins. Uh, Lord, I, I recognize that you're faithful. You're just. And your word says, Lord, that uh, if I confess, you're, you would forgive me. And so I pray that you would forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, change my life, Lord, help me to live for you, help me to surrender my will to your will. Um, and I just ask this in Jesus' name, and also, Lord, ask that if anybody here did pray that, Lord, that there would be that confidence, that, that there would be that change within them, uh, that they would choose uh, to continue to believe in you, Lord, continue to walk with you and draw near to you. And may that be all of us as well that, that do believe in you, uh, Lord, that we would continue to serve you and recognize, Lord, you, you're victorious. You, you made us more than conquerors, not just to conquer, more than conquerors. We're victorious because of what you did on the cross. And because of your blood shed for us, we're forgiven, Lord. Uh, no matter what it is, Lord. Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far as, as, as you removed our transgressions from us. Our sins, Lord, they're washed, they're cleansed, they're gone. Love keeps no record of wrong. You, you thrown it in the sea of forgetfulness. And we thank you for that. So help us, Lord, to be um, having that, that joy from you, Lord. That's our strength, just knowing that you are our joy. And uh, we love you so much, Lord. Continue to reveal yourself to us. Uh, continue to do a mighty work, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us for this closing song?